What's going on guys? So today we're actually gonna create a Telegram bot. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how it works real quick and then I'm gonna show you a diagram of how all the pieces come together. Then we're gonna review the code and you guys can build your own. So we can get started now. Uh, the first thing that we wanna do is pull up Telegram. We have the most rad bot here. So we can say things like hello and he can answer us back and we can also say things like rad and he can also answer us back with that so you guys can put whatever responses you want there you can integrate with things like google drive um you can integrate with things like pretty much anything you want to you can integrate with your own servers get live updates you can do things like weather stock information latest news music gifts everything so let's go ahead now and take a look at the diagram here so this is how this thing works so essentially, guys, what we are using is we're starting down here. So if this, if this looks a little bit intimidating at first, we're going to walk through it step by step. So don't, no fear. So this is the app server right here. So this is what we are running locally on our machine. So this app server, when this starts up, what this does is it sends a post request to this Telegram server. And these are the Telegram servers where Telegram is actually hosted. This is what's going to be processing all the Telegram information. And the post request that we're sending is actually a post request, so that means we're sending some data to that server for it to be uh, actionable, some actionable data. So this post request is essentially sending a, a the URL of this ngrok server over here. So let's start right here. So again, we we actually well actually I want to rewind a second. So we actually we're going to start up that ngrok server first. And what this ngrok server does is it exposes the endpoint on our local machine for this app server. So we can go ahead and now we send that information with that endpoint that is on our local machine to the telegram servers. So what the telegrams what that tells the telegram servers is that whenever we receive a message from our telegram user interface over here that it's going to come through to these telegram servers and then it's going to send that it's going to forward the information from that message to these ngrok servers over here, okay? So step 1, step 1 should really be start the ngrok server. Step two, start the app server. App server sends a post request to the Telegram servers with the ngrok URL. So now the Telegram servers know that when we get a message from the user interface to send it to the, to uh, post that message update. So basically post that event to these ngrok server, to the ngrok server that we spun up locally. And then that ngrok server is going to forward that request to the endpoint that we specified on our local machine. So what this really means, what this ultimately allows us to do is basically listen to any kind of events. We basically are in a sense kind of uh, subscribing to events that occur on the Telegram servers via, via this webhook is what this is called. So we're basically anytime that a message comes to our bot, we get notified of that via this webhook. Okay, so then basically when we get notified of that, that would be, uh, so imagine this right here. So imagine again, we post with the URL, uh, the Telegram user interface sends a message to the Telegram server, and the Telegram server knows to forward or essentially kind of post, it sends a post request actually to that server we specified. And then when we get that data back at our app server endpoint, then we can actually take action because then we can look at the, the text from that message. We can look at things like the first name, the last name, a whole bunch of stuff. So essentially, guys, now we can take that, post it to the, uh, then post our response from our app server, can conditionally respond based on things like the text or whatever, uh, based on the information that we get to the Telegram server, and the Telegram server can update the UI. So we have like one, two, three, we have four moving parts here essentially, and we have like a little bit of a loop right here. This is kind of our web hook. This is our web hook, and this is where our events are going to happen. We have these message events, and then they come through our web hook. Our app server gets the information it needs, and then it goes ahead and responds to the Telegram server, which in turn updates the user interface. That's essentially what's happening here, guys. Um, and we're just going to leave it at that. There are a couple other parts in there that are like HTTP servers, but for now, that'll just overcomplicate things. So let's go ahead now and talk about the code here. So this is what we're looking at. I'm going to zoom in here so you guys can see. All right, so we've got um, from Flask, we want to import Flask, request, JSONify. We basically have, I'm not going to go through one by one here, but we have, we're importing Flask. We're importing a Telegram bot class that we created in another file. We'll walk through that in just a second. And then we're in, importing a, that initial webhook URL that we are posting. Remember that we are posting to... Um, there we go, this initial webhook URL we're importing so that we can post to that Telegram server on startup. 
So we have here app equals flask name. This will create the initial app server object for us. And this is where we're going to add those endpoints to. So then we go ahead and we call a static method on our class telegram bot called a knit webhook, which is down here. And what this essentially does this is a very simple uh, function here. But essentially what this does is this initializes the webhook with the, uh, the URL that it's passed. So essentially, uh, these this again, we're going to go back and reference our graph here. So this telegram server right here. I don't know, I hope you guys can see my mouse. This telegram server right here, what this thing is, is uh, this has endpoints as well. And we can send those post requests to those endpoints and it has a specific URL that specifies a specific endpoint. And we can send that, send that, uh, send a request to that URL. And in this case, it's a get request. Um, it could be anything. It could be a post request. It could be a get request. In this case, they chose to use a get request. But um, we basically send that data to that URL with our, uh, again, our ngrok IO uh, URL that we initially started up with. So that's going to go right here. And then we, so we initialize the webhook. We basically say, okay, you guys know what server to update to. Here's our, here's our URL. So next up here, we have this app.route backslash webhook. So this is the actual endpoint on our local server that is not our ngrok server. Our ngrok server is going to forward any incoming, any, all the, that data that it receives from the Telegram server, it's going to forward to this endpoint on our local app server. And so then here we have this function that will fire when we receive that data. And then we're going to go ahead and say request.getjson. So basically the incoming request actually has the data that we need on a JSON body. So when you're sending a request, Requests, there are several ways that you can actually send data with a request. One of those ways is a JSON body, so you can send a raw JSON object and we can actually parse that off the request and then use that data. Uh, the other ways are, well there's a bunch of other ways, but you could also do things like query parameters or query string parameters. So if you guys see on like a URL, if you ever see something like, um, I don't know, we're just going to use an example, google.com uh, backslash um, Q and we can say Q equals um, name and you could say a whole bunch of stuff question mark um, X equals purchase so these are all just like random things so these is basically a way to pass um, parameters in the query string and actually let me get the exact uh, thing for you guys here so I want to pull this up uh, query Query string parameters. Yeah, so you guys see right here, we have these way to actually pass parameters in the query string, and we have this way to JSON body. Um, just right here, this is our way that we would paste it pa up. Uh, pass those parameters as if it were JSON. And based on the way that we receive those parameters, uh, we can actually make different decisions or based on the way that we receive those parameters, we can parse them off in different ways. So another way, <clears throat> another way you guys could do this, just so you guys are familiar, understand there are actually a whole lot of ways to send data is XML. Um, so this is a little bit different markup language, but you can actually send XML messages. And I think a good application to show you guys here briefly before we continue is called Postman. So what Postman is, is actually a way for testing all of these endpoints. I know this is just a little bit outside the scope of this video here, but I'm trying to make uh, kind of familiar you guys, familiarize you guys with this ecosystem a little bit. So you guys can see here that we have body, we have all these different things we can send. We can send XML, we can send uh, JSON, we can send plain text, we can send um, these form, uh, these, these form URL encoded data, we can send plain form data, um, and these are all different ways to basically transmit data over HTTP. So now that we've kind of got an idea of what's going on here, we're going to skip back to the code. So we've got a uh, request to get JSON, and then we go ahead and we create this instance of the Telegram bot class. So the Telegram bot class is over here, and again, when we create the instance of it, there's nothing particularly special that happens. We just have these, um, basically these attributes here that are going to be set later on with any kind of data that comes in from the request, so then the class can use these attributes for further processing. So we go ahead and we say bot.parse webhook data. So again, we have our request come in. We extract the JSON from the body of the request. We initialize an instance of our class. We go ahead and we actually parse the webhook data, uh, passing in this JSON body that we extracted. So we can go ahead and take a look at this function. 
And again, what this does here is this is actually pulling off the specific, um, the specific fields that are part of the JSON object. So again, there's a whole bunch of fields that are part of this JSON object, but in this case, um, to be, keep it simple, you only need the chat ID, the incoming text message, the first name and the last name. That way, that's how we're able to respond with hello, uh, whoever's name is that sent the message and the incoming text. Um, so once we go ahead and we parse that webhook data, we have this success variable, and the success variable is where uh, is assigned to by this bot dot action. So what this is is a way to actually conditionally take actions based on what those parameters that came in were, or not sorry, not parameters, based on the message that we received came in that based on the message that came in, what it was. So essentially guys here, we have if self dot incoming message text equals backslash um, hello or slash hello, then we go ahead and we respond with a, we respond with a string here as this hello, whatever the name is. And then we have this thing, um, if incoming message text equals slash rad, then we actually respond with an emoji. Now this is just like a little cheap hack where you can put in actually copy and paste emojis into the uh, program and it actually returns them, or into the code and it returns them. Uh, you can also use Unicode and other things like that. Um, so then we go ahead and we just respond with this self message. We say we assign this variable success, which if you remember is what's going to be returned in our function that is calling this function. And then we go ahead here and we say success equals send message. And then send message goes ahead and actually makes that, uh, makes that request to the Telegram servers back here makes this number five request right here um, and then we go ahead and then the telegram servers will update with whatever string that we send them or whatever data that we send them and that'll post that to the user interface so then we go ahead and we return true if the response from the telegram servers is 200 aka uh, success we received your message and everything checks out otherwise return false and so then we go ahead and return uh, jsonify success equals success passing in that true or false boolean um, as a result of the message that we sent to the telegram servers and what this is going to do is this will actually tell telegram um, to not repeat send that data to our, through our web hook kind of cycle there so if we don't send um, and I didn't actually include this part on the on the diagram here but if we don't send that uh, response uh, in this case if we don't send that okay response here that we got this jsonify success equals success or success equals true in most cases then the telegram server is actually going to keep posting the most recent messages here to the ngrok server which means when we turn on um, which means we'll actually just keep responding over and over even though we actually responded previously so then we just go ahead here and say if our name equals main then we're going to go ahead and run on port 5000 and then what um, what's important to note here is that you need when you use ngrok you need to expose ngrok on that exact same port so you guys can see here i know it's a little bit small text but these little things down here these are post requests it's just keeping us updated on the most recent post requests that have come in from um in the terms of our ngrok server that have actually come in from the um sorry that have come in from the uh what do you call it the telegram servers so let's take a look here too Ah, windows everywhere okay so you can guys can see here like these post requests are coming in here this post webhook with a 200 okay status code and then it'll come in here and you can see then this is being this post request that came from the telegram servers to our ngrok server which we're looking at in this window right here goes over here and then we can see these post requests getting forwarded onto our app server right here which is what we see the interface for on the right here so essentially guys that's what it comes down to and now when you guys want to go ahead and make your own you can go ahead and just download this telegram user interface um, then you talk to the bot father here so you can search at bot father and that'll pull them up and then you can go ahead here and say something like slash new bot and then it'll just it'll prompt you all right what are we going to call it uh, we could say youtube bot for telegram and it must end in bot. So yt bot rad bot. Okay. So then it'll say, uh, congratulations, you created your new bot. Go ahead and grab this token. Now this token is very important here. Uh, you want to keep this token because this token is what actually allows you to interface with your bot 
uh, with the bot on the Telegram servers. So this will allow you to update, send messages, reply with the chat IDs. And that takes us back to our last part here where I'm going to show you guys um, this right here. So this is our config.py file, and these are these URLs that we're actually sending um, that we're actually sending this data to. So you guys can see we have our ngrok URL, which specifies this URL right here, this HTTPS URL. Make sure this is this HTTPS is the URL that you send to the Telegram servers, so that will go ahead and they know to respond to that one. Um, so you can put that here in this kind of constant variable that we then import. Um, and then we have our base telegram URL, which again, is this is just used in conjunction with these other URLs. So essentially right here, telegram init webhook URL is basically a URL specified by this right here. So we have our base telegram URL. You guys can see here. So we have these two squiggly brackets, one here and one here. And this first one is replaced by a string containing the base telegram URL. You guys can see that right here. That'll go in those squiggly brackets right there. And then our second one here, guys, is replaced by this local webhook endpoint. So that one will go ahead and go in this right here. So then we basically have uh, HTTPS slash slash API dot telegram dot org slash bot. Um, and then that's formatted with that token that we copied down. So I kind of did a little bit of like unnecessary really abstraction here just to make it easier to create these URLs if you want to add on to these. But essentially, guys, here that that URL would look a lot like this. It would just look like that, uh, api.telegram.org slash bot. Then you would have your bot token, bot token, bot token. You'd have your bot token right there, um, obviously with not without without these things right here. You guys might not be loud if you guys are listening. Um, but okay, without those things. Um, and then you would go ahead and you would just put slash uh, set webhook and then question mark with our query string uh, parameter here and then that would be that would be our local webhook endpoint which would be our our uh, ngrok url that would look like this blah 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 dot ngrok dot io and remember you get that you get that url when you start your ngrok server which is what you do i'll put the link for downloading the ngrok server in the description here and then once you download it you would just go to that directory that it's downloaded into and just run ngrok or ngrok http and then whatever port you want to expose it on you want to make sure that this port that you see here so I, as you can see i'm running it i would be running it on port 5000 you want to make sure that matches up right here with this port that your local app server is running on as well so i know i feel like i kind of just went in a little bit of a roundabout there but essentially guys the important things to remember are i'll put these urls in the description as well the important things to remember are download ngrok start up ngrok uh, go ahead and just write your app server right here which is basically has an endpoint and then it runs on a certain port then you want ngrok and the port your app server is running on to match up when your app server starts it sends a request to the telegram servers saying forward all the messages that get sent to my bot through this ngrok url so i can receive them and respond and then you go ahead and you basically write your conditional responses in this action method right here and then you have the text that you can respond with. So I hope you guys could follow along with that. I know it was kind of like a lot of moving parts. So that's why I put that's why I put together this little diagram. This is kind of fun to make too. But this is I'll put a link to this diagram. I'll put a link to how to download Ngrok. I'll put a link to the source code. I'll put a link to Telegram. And I'll also put the Telegram URLs in the description. So again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, if you do end up making this project, I'd love, post a link or like let me know in the comments. I'd love to check out what you guys did. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Definitely subscribe. Thumbs up if you enjoyed this. And I'll see you in the next one.